so hello everyone um, today I plan to talk a little bit about the threadless inject technique um, what it's about um, what's behind it and um, mainly how to customize this technique for injection into other processes than the default one which is shown in the um, proof of concept by CCOP so this technique was released eight months ago uh, around about on besides uh, I can highly recommend you to take a look at the corresponding slides the talks also on YouTube so you should take a look at this um, talk as well um, really good talk really good technique uh, I can only recommend that one um, so what is it about if we talk about process injection in general it uh, typically contains or there is multiple steps we have to open or get a handle to the remote process, we have to allocate memory in that remote process, we have to write shellcode into that remote process and we also have to execute that shellcode afterwards. And uh, Fretless Inject has, or the main thing is that you get rid of the execute primitive. So the very last step to execute your shellcode falls away and um, EDRs typically flag on process injection or they detect it by the whole combination, so the combination of memory allocation, write shellcode into a remote process and execute that shellcode, this combination leads to typically a memory scan um, which will flag your um, non-malicious uh, C2 payload. Um, and if you don't execute the shellcode yourself, but if the remote process does this by itself, um, then it's very likely um, that, that you will, may be under the radar for the EDR because they don't see that you executed it. You, they only see that you allocated memory or maybe that you wrote shellcode into the remote process. You can also get rid of memory allocation maybe later on about this. But um, yeah, so the idea is to leave out the execute primitive. Um, this is done by um, hooking the a function in the remote process which is called an irregular interval. Um, so we basically place a jump instruction to a function of the remote process which is called anyway in a, in a regular interval by, by this remote process. So if you for example take a look at uh, notepad.exe and if you if you monitor what that is doing you would see that it uh, calls nt create file or nt read file from ntdll in a regular interval or when you click some stuff there. Um, so you could hook that for notepad. But the main question is how to find out which functions are called in a regular interval by, by processes. And this is what I, what I mainly want to talk about today. I don't want to talk about this um, technique and the inner workings, but instead I want to more talk about um, how to target this technique for your, for your, uh, for your uh, processes. And I prepared a little bit here in terms of I did install Teams and I did install um, API Monitor. Uh, API Monitor, if you don't know about that, um, this is what I would like to recommend to you to, to check um, which process calls which APIs in a regular interval. Um, you can download it from here, uh, you can install it, and if you install it, it basically looks like this. Um, and if you install it, and if it looks like this, then you should check mark all of the things here to see as much as possible. So it would be possible for sure to, to only check a few ones and not everything, but I'm, I'm usually marking everything to get as much output as possible. Um, and if you checked all of these um, boxes here, then you can say I want to monitor a new process or you can choose an existing one from, from the process list. Um, in our case, I'm going to take a look at uh, teams.exe. Teams is a good target for injection typically because um, teams um, does a lot of HTTP connection and um, if a process is doing a lot of HTTP connection anyway, it's more likely for your um, C2 um, HTTP connections to, to also go under the radar because the process in, where you, in which your C2 um, lives, um, if that's doing HTTP connections a lot of, then it's, it's more likely for, you, likely for you to stay under the radar by, by just going into that process instead of 
like using an unsigned executable on disk um, uh, which is doing only um, HTTP connections to your C2 server. Yeah, what can we see here? Um, we can basically see which APIs are called um, at which time by um, teams. For example, we can see the first thing which was monitored is that from kernel 32, query performance counter was called, then get current thread ID was called, um, and a lot of other functions. And if you want to um, find out how to use Threadless Inject or how how to target or to, to find out which API to, to hook uh, for your target process um, to get your payload to execute, then you have to find out which API is called in a regular interval here. And for example, TLS get value is called multiple times, as you can see here, it's called again here, it's called again here, it's called again here, it's called again here. If an, but if an API is called too often, um, it's not, not the best candidate to hook because maybe uh, some threads in parallel call this function um, and, and this may cause some, some problems with, with threadless inject technique. So I would not use a function or hook a function which is called multiple times in a row in a very short interval um, after another. Uh, instead we can take a look for or we wait, w check for single functions that are executed every like few seconds for example or every 10, 20, 30 seconds, for example. And one thing that stands about, I did some preparation uh, before doing the video, is that um, wait for a single object, for example, in this case is called um, in a regular interval. And this leads to anti wait for single object being called in a regular interval. Um, so we see here it was 124705 when it was called. And it was called four seconds later again. And it was not called for some time. Then it was called oh four seconds. Oh maybe it's, it's maybe it's I didn't check that before. Maybe it's always round about four seconds. Every four seconds anti wait for single object is called. So this is very, very frequent interval. Uh, this year is already a little bit faster. So one good candidate for teams to hook with a threadless inject technique would be anti wait for single object. And you can basically do this with, with API monitor, monitor for every process. You can, what I just showed you or what I, what I described before was, was uh, Notepad, for example. If you monitor Notepad, And you see that you see nothing <laughs> because it's not doing that by itself. Oh, okay, we have to click on it at least. We are here. We have some stuff like get window info. Enum child windows. But you could do the same approach here to just check which APIs are called in a regular interval. And if some API is called in a regular interval, this is a good candidate. If it's not called too often uh, in a row, this is a good candidate for for injection. Let's see, anti-create file. No, it's, it was not that. So not anti-read file. Okay. And this is my fault. I think it was I, I did test with NT uh, with Notepad before. So the heap stuff is not the best candidate because this is done too often. Yeah, it's, let's let's stick to teams for the moment. Um, so we saw that anti wait for a single object is called in a regular interval, and now you could yeah build your own tools, uh, integrate that technique into into whatever you already have. Um, I think the POC um, on GitHub also gives you the option already to... Um, it has some embedded shellcode and it can... 
let's see, is there some options to display this help? Base64 shellcode can be embedded. You can specify a target process ID and you can specify a DLL name and an export function name. So as a DLL name, you could use ntdll.dll here. And as export function, you could use um, ntwait for single object. Um, I don't want to do it with the proof of concept here in the moment. Um, but instead I want to show how to do that with my um, Pekka because this um, technique is already embedded here. So this is the help from my from my Packer. And uh, we have the threadless inject technique uh, here, which can be enabled with threadless. You can specify a DLL to target with threadless DLL and you can specify a function to target with threadless func. And um, yeah, basically the input here uh, uh, to pack to execute as a daemon shellcode. Uh, I'm enabling threadless inject with minus minus threadless. I say the remote process to target is teams.exe. Um, I want to inject into a remote process. This flag just enables remote process injection. The threadless DLL is ntdll. The threadless function is ntwait for single object. And the output executable is teamsinject.exe. And I want to see um, verbose output for um, from the loader to, to just sh show some stuff to you here what is happening in the um, background. Now it's compiling a loader. Now I can execute that loader and our target process is 1164. We are opening a handle, we're getting a handle to the process, we allocate memory for our shellcode, we are decrypting our daemon encrypted payload, then we write the decrypted payload into the remote process, we reprotect the page permissions to execute read, and then we check for the anti weight for single object address, which is this one here. We will save um, the old content of the uh, hooked function to later on restore that so that we not crash anything. And uh, then in a regular interval, um, we check for our hook being called. And at some point, it was every four seconds roundabout, as we could see um, uh, previously, uh, the hook has been called. And um, we can see that we successfully injected into teams.exe um, on our computer 1164 as process ID. Let's see if we get some output back from our process. Yeah, looks good. So we can execute commands. Injection was successful via threadless inject technique. Mm. If you want to even improve the technique and the stealthiness of this technique, um, one recommendation I can give you, and basically nearly everything which you need for it is already public. Um, there is this one repository here, um, yeah, the conference repository from Otaheka. And he had a, a workshop on DEF CON this year on how to get rid of um, MDE events alerts um, for injection. And he combined um, threadless inject with uh, module stomping in this case. And the whole code is, you can get, the whole code is public. You can just take a look at this GitHub, uh, at the code. And um, this is what I basically took and ported to NIM. Uh, with with some improvements, some some uh, changes. Um, of course, it's not exactly the same, um, but uh, this was more or less the template. And um, yeah, if you take a look at this, then it's better in terms of it's not allocating new memory as our loader here did before. So we here we um, allocated memory and we wrote our shellcode into that memory. So we have unbacked memory, which is not backed by legitimate disk, uh, a legitimate DLL on disk. 
Uh, and it's even better to also get rid of this allocate memory primitive because then um, the EDR sees even less ETWTI events um, or kernel callbacks. Uh, and uh, if you do it like this, then you only have there was a handle open to the remote process. Something was uh, there was page page permissions protection changes because we changed page page execute um, read to read write and afterwards to page execute read again. But with page protection changes, writing shell code and no execute primitive, which basically should lead to, I would say in the moment, um, no or nearly no detection by, by most EDRs, by most common EDRs um, uh, for today. So, so you get rid of a detection for the C2 itself, but you also get rid of process injection alerts in general because with NDE for example if you just use allocate memory write shell code and thread creation you always create a medium alert uh, that suspicious project in process injection has taken place regardless of the payload even if it's something completely harmless you will generate this alert but if you don't allocate memory yourself and if you don't create a thread or queue an APC or something then you will have no alert at all anymore, which is super cool. Um, and as like background information, um, all of this is also possible um, with the newest release of the Packer. So you can combine threadless inject with module stomping to um, to to without thread creation load a DLL into the remote process or local process and to use the text section from there to execute the payload. And you can also combine this with uh, Karo Kan technique, which is a technique which I published um, one month ago, last month. And um, this technique um, injects the payload or injects two shell codes. Um, the first shell code is um, the encrypted malicious payload, which is put into a read-write protected page. The second shell code is um, custom shell code. It's basically C code, which you can see in the public repository here, um, decrypt protect.c. Um, it's C code, which which um, can safely even get executed with with thread creation, uh, which typically triggers to a memory scan, and the memory scan will not find anything because our payload is still encrypted. And if you combine this with threadless inject and with module stomping, um, it's even cooler because um, uh, even if an EDR does a regular scan, a regular memory scan for, for malicious payloads on your target process, and even if threadless inject didn't hit so far because the function was not yet executed in the remote process, then your malicious payload is still encrypted. So um, any EDR will not find the payload even if the function was not um, called yet. So this adds a little bit more and layer of, of stealth to, to these two. And I would say all three combined are, are super cool. Um, yeah, this custom shell code sleeps for x seconds, by default it's 10 um, to avoid the memory scan, which could be triggered by normal process injection. Then it reprotects the read write uh, encrypted section to read execute and makes a direct jump to the um, actual malicious shellcode so that uh, the direct jump does not create an ETWTI event or a kernel callback. Uh, uh, so uh, this should be, um, is, is all in the local remote process and um, therefore shouldn't, get, shouldn't be get detected by ETWTI. Um, yeah, all three techniques in uh, a combination, I would say this is a, a really good thing in the moment to use. Um, yeah, that's already it. Um, so a little bit on how to customize threadless inject to target it on other processes than the default one. Um, and then some best practices recommendations from my side on, on how to further improve this um, POC to even get rid of um, other potential events or detections slash alerts from, from EDRs. Okay, thank you guys for watching and have a nice day. Goodbye.